I did get a question uh, just because Danny had brought it up about Bivitrol and what Bivitrol is. Uh, so Bivitrol is a non-addictive anti-craving medication. It's a uh, it's a 30-day shot. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about Narcan. Narcan is the drug reversal that they use when somebody overdoses. Uh, very similar in, in a sense. Um, it, it has some of the same components as far as medication goes, but it's an extended time release. So it's instead of being reactive to the overdose, it's actually being pre proactive in uh, preventing overdose because it completely blocks opiate receptors. It will flush any opiates that are trying to get into the, into the brain. So basically, it, uh, it doesn't allow the person to get any euphoric uh, high off of using, and it also prevents potential overdose because the opiate receptors are blocked off so that the, that the drug actually never reaches the opiate receptors. Um, so it's, uh, you know, and it really helps with the cravings because pretty much opiate receptors only have one purpose in the brain, and that is to take on foreign opiates. Uh, it's also where the craving, the obsession, uh, they're very powerful in the brain that block the thought process that Anna was talking about. That Anna was talking about earlier. So um, it's definitely a, uh, a tool that we've seen out in St. Louis be highly effective. Um, I mean, I think you know I said that at the dinner the other night. Um, you know, there's a lot of research out there that talk about the, the relapse rates and, and things like that. And I think opiate addicts, I mean, you're talking about 90% plus uh, relapse rates. You know, and, and you know, I think that's with the old school thought process on the treatment of opiates. Um, you know, the, the, the medications that are out there right now, we're literally seeing the complete opposite of whatever those statistics are. So they're saying less than 10% people maintain sobriety. I'm saying around 10% of the people are relapsing that we're seeing with the proper medications and resources and support that are out there. So it, it does make a big difference. So thanks, thanks for asking. Is it, is it a lifelong, lifelong? So, so, I mean, and this gets back into the philosophy of whether this is a disease or not. You know, when I got into treatment, you know, the, the, it, was, it was proposed to me for me to stay on the medication for six to 12 months. But then they also followed up by saying this is a long, it's a lifelong disease. And I said, why the hell would I take the medication for six months? You know what I mean? You said, I'm going to struggle with this. This disease is trying to kill me on a daily basis. Why would I stop at six months when I've just lowered my tolerance? And, you know, basically, if I do have a slip up, my, my chances of overdosing just increase it tenfold. And on top of that, I'm doing extremely well while I'm on the medication. And it's not addictive, so it's not like I'm switching one drug for another. You know, I'm just doing really well. So, you know, for me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You know, a lot of people, you know, you know, it goes back to how this, you know, when we talk about the stigma. You know, the stigma of looking at this as a disease. It's not treat. It's not looked at as a disease, and it's not treated as, as a disease uh, because it, if it was, then people would be staying on these medications long term. You know. And you know, if it wasn't stigmatized, then people also wouldn't be having their walls up when these conversations are going up, you know, about whether this is a choice or not. Because you know, if I look at this as a disease, and it's very, it's a very clear answer for me. I need to stay on the medication. If you, if you, if I feel like this is a choice, and I'm being stigmatized, and I'm a weak person for staying on this medication because you're saying this is a choice, then I'm going to get off the medication. Because, you know, this is just my personal, you know, I mean, you're, attacking, you're attacking me personally because of the stigma. So, you know, it goes back to how we look at this, how we view it, and how we treat it. And, you know, if those three things are changed, you know, the results are, you know, what we're seeing. And that's a complete opposite of what you're experiencing and why we're having that pandemic on our hands right now. So, it goes back to how you guys being here is helping change the stigma. You guys getting educated, getting the information understand the resources, understand the options for these individuals, uh, and how that is literally changing lives. So, thanks.